Good morning. morning. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. May God be with you. Let us pray. O Lord, make us have perpetual love and reverence for your holy name, for you never fail to help and govern those whom you have set upon the sure foundation of your loving kindness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the book of Genesis. The child grew and was weaned, and Abraham made a great feast on the day that Isaac was weaned. But Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, whom she had borne to Abraham, playing with her son Isaac. So she said to Abraham, cast out this slave woman with her son. For the son of this slave woman shall not inherit along with my son, Isaac. The matter was very distressing to Abraham on account of his son. But God said to Abraham, Do not be distressed because of the boy and because of your slave woman. Whatever Sarah says to you, do as she tells you. For it is through Isaac that offspring shall be named for you. As for the son of the slave woman... I will make a nation of him also, because he is your offspring. So Abraham rose early in the morning and took bread and a skin of water and gave it to Hagar, putting it on her shoulder along with the child and sent her away. And she departed and wandered about in the wilderness of Beersheba. When the water and the skin was gone, she cast the child under one of the bushes. Then she went down, she went and sat down opposite him a good way off, about the distance of a bow shot, for she said, Do not let me look on the death of the child. And as she sat opposite him, she lifted up her voice and wept. And God heard the voice of the boy. And the angel of God called to Hagar from heaven and said to her, 
What troubles you, Hagar? Do not be afraid. For God has heard the voice of the boy where he is. Come, lift up the boy and hold him fast with your hand, for I will make a great nation of him. Then God opened her eyes and she saw a well of water. She went and filled the skin with water and gave the boy a drink. God was with the boy and he grew up. He lived in the wilderness and became an expert with the bow. He lived in the wilderness of Paran, and his mother got a wife for him from the land of Egypt. The word of the Lord. The psalm appointed for today is a portion of Psalm 86. Let us pray this psalm together by responsively in half verses. I will read to the asterisk. Bow down your ear, O Lord, and answer me. Keep watch over my life, for I am faithful. Be merciful to me, O Lord, for you are my God. Gladden the soul of your servant. For you, O Lord, are good and forgiving. And love Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer. And to my In the time of my trouble, I will call upon you. Amen. Among the gods, there is none like you, O Lord. Amen. All nations have made have made you have made. You have made will come and worship you, O Lord. Lord For you are great, you do wondrous things. Turn to me and have mercy upon me. Show me a sign of your favor so that those who hate me may see it and be ashamed. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Should we continue in sin in order that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin go on living in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death so that just as Christ was risen from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said to the twelve apostles, A disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher, and the slave like the master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. And even the hairs of your head are counted. So do not be afraid. You are, <clears throat> you are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I also will acknowledge before my father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I also will deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and one's foes will be the members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake will find it. The Gospel of the Lord. Jesus said, I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. Please be seated. When Reverend Claire invited me to come preach today, I, for, I made the rookie mistake of not checking the lectionary to see what the texts were uh, that uh, she would have me talk about. And had, had I looked ahead, I almost certainly would have come here on another Sunday. <laughs> Good grief. Well, peace, no peace, but a sword. Good morning. Uh, my name is Scott Sherman, and uh, I lead the Center for Church Innovation, which is an uh, affiliate center of the Graduate Theological Union. We study congregations, we research congregations, uh, Christian congregations, and we work in the space of congregational development and new church development. And uh, I'm very pleased to, to work with this diocese as a priest in the Diocese of California in the, the project known as Vital and Thriving Congregations, which this parish is part of. Uh, and I will say, uh, I, I don't know, um, you may recognize my voice if you have listened to the Vital and Thriving podcast because Claire and I do a podcast together. So I'm sorry to put a face with that voice, but anyway, that's... That maybe you've heard our podcast, and if you haven't, consider that a shameless plug. Well, some of you who have been a part of this Vital and Thriving Congregations initiative, if you've come to any of the meetings that have been sponsored by the parish, you know that one of the things we do is the spiritual practice that we call dwelling in the Word. And it's a process basically of sitting with a text from the gospel, and it's actually this 
chapter, Matthew chapter 10. And after having just read it, you may say, why would you spend a lot of time reading that passage? It's, it's kind of depressing. Uh, but we start with actually the beginning part of Matthew chapter 10. And what we do is we invite people to listen deeply to these words of Jesus, where Jesus first gathers the people that are following him beyond the 12 disciples and sends them out in his mission. Uh, we encourage people to listen to it attentively and then to break up into twos and listen one another into free speech to really try to discern how does this speak to us in the church in this moment right now? How might we be being sent? I, I'm just curious, has anyone been present here for one of those dwelling in the word? I, okay, I, I see about half the room, something like that, right? Well, I think it's wonderful, but one thing I have learned is that usually people are annoyed by this practice. Uh, sometimes they're annoyed because it's repetitive. It take a whole year to sit with Mark, uh, with uh, Matthew chapter 10. Uh, sometimes it's because it's repetitive. Sometimes it's because there are just some difficult bits in it, kind of like what we just read. Jesus sends out 70 or so people back into the neighborhood they're from in Galilee. So these are Jewish followers of Jesus going back into their, their mostly Jewish communities, and they have a message from him about his peace and the kingdom of God that's coming. And they are told to go and find a person of peace and stay with that person. <laughs> go connect with people who are people of peace. He connects uh, his people people who are grounded in his message, hospitality of their neighbors. That is, to relate to people who don't get to Jesus with his message, so that together they can discover what it is God is doing in this new thing called the reign of God or the kingdom of God. They are a community being formed by Jesus, being sent out by Jesus. Now, Jesus says uh, plenty of people are not going to be very interested in this message of peace. Uh, they're worked up. <laughs> they're caught up in rivalry. They're caught up in anger. Uh, we can relate to this in this country right now. Uh, he says they're not going to be interested in it. And he actually says, and judgment is going to fall upon them. It's one of those hard sayings that people often don't like when we, when we meditate on Matthew 10. But I think it's important to hear because Jesus is saying, look, if you choose violence, if you choose conflict or bigotry or hatred or resentment, if you choose to live into that, guess what? That's what you'll get. He's offering an alternative. And today, we hear the rest of this passage uh, of Matthew 10. And honestly, it doesn't get any easier. Uh, even though he says that God's reign is going to inaugurate peace True shalom, it's a Hebrew word that really gets at the idea of, of flourishing, of well-being, safety. Which from the civil rights movement of the beloved community. Everybody belongs, where all needs are met. Even Jesus says the very announcement of it threatens the status quo. It threatens those who are in power. And he says it can cause real conflict, especially and he talks about this, all these relationships that can be tried, that it can cut right down into marriages, into parents and children, and all kinds of uh, places in the neighborhood. Uh, in Matthew's community, the, the ones reading this, this gospel the first time, they have a living memory of Jesus. And they know what his preaching, they know that it got him killed right? They had a personal connection. Matthew's community had a personal connection to the apostle Peter, and they know what happened to him. Nero crucified him upside down in Rome. And so as these words are written and they are passing them along in their community, they're remembering that there's like real cost to this message. Now for us, thankfully, we're not facing anything like that, but I do think there's relevance for us, right? Because our country is rife 
with divisions right now. Just think of the incredible tensions we live with in terms of political, economic, cultural, social differences. As a priest, I regularly talk to people uh, in San Francisco where I live who no longer feel like they can go home for Thanksgiving or Christmas because the, the dinner table conversation is just too intense. They just, they just can't take it. For some people, it might be a newfound faith in Jesus that creates this kind of social tension that Jesus is talking about. But I think for many of us, it's really sometimes other family members who, if I put it generously, I would say, hear Jesus' words differently. <laughs> they, uh, and they're marching to the beat of a different drummer. Anybody have any sense of what I'm talking about here? Uh, those who claim to be on Team Jesus <laughs> and yet seem to be completely out of sync with how maybe we're trying to read these basic questions around our duty to the poor, our concern for the earth, the rights of women, how we regard our siblings who are LGBTQIA+, plus as cele being celebrated this weekend for Pride. Um, so here's my question for you today. Why would we choose to dwell in this text of Matthew 10 as part of our journey in vital and thriving congregations as it lands in our lectionary today? Why pick this one? <laughs> well, I think, it's, I think it's actually liberating because in it, Jesus just shoots straight with us about the cost of following him and the nature of what might fall out in the community experience of being a Jesus follower. Uh, let's face it, right now, uh, I'll, I'll do a little straight shooting. The church, the Christian church in the West is in deep trouble. There's lots of research and lots of statistics. Some of you have probably heard some of it before, but actually along with the Presbyterians and the Lutherans, the Episcopal Church, our beloved Episcopal Church, institutionally speaking, is dying. At current rates of decline, without any significant change, the Episcopal Church as we know it will no longer exist after the year 2050. This is what the research shows, and if you check in with denominational officials, they all know it. 2050, it's a, it's a terrifying number. So here's my question. And I mean it seriously. Is that a bad thing? <laughs> well, obviously, it's a bad thing. Right? We love the Episcopal Church. We love uh, all the growth it's made uh, socially and so many wonderful things about the Episcopal Church. But is it a bad thing? And what I mean by that is, might God be at work to dismantle something within, the Western, within Western Christianity? at work to dismantle something in order to bring about something new. That is to bring forth new life. One of my favorite theologians was Bishop Leslie Newbigin. And he said uh, he believed in something that he called, uh, and he said he thought the church in the West needed what he called a theology of the second day, by which he meant Christ's body had to decay in the tomb on the second day before resurrection could happen on the third day. And he said, when I look at the church in the world today, I think maybe there's a lot that just needs to die so that a renewal can actually happen before we see the church that God is building. Obviously, I would not be giving myself vocationally uh, to the renewal of the Episcopal Church if I didn't think it was possible, if I didn't have some hope. But what I want to underline in light of these teachings this morning is this. I don't think our hope needs to be in the church and what it's been. Our hope is in the risen Lord of the church and his promised reign in Jesus' mission to bring God's peace and justice into this world. And to hear Jesus' warning where he says, it's going to be messy. There'll be disruption. He says, a sword piercing right into your relationships. Our hope isn't our church has a mission. It's rather that God's mission to heal and renew creation will always have a church. The church needs to change 
experience massive disruptions, tensions. But at the end of the day, Jesus is always going to be forming a community out of his love that can share his love. I uh, have been privileged to work with your team here at Christ Church, and I see real seeds of hope here. I see seeds of hope in that desire to be a loving presence in your community. And I see it in other congregations in our diocese. I think it's in full of peace. They genuinely want to stand up and prefer that promise of future for their networks and for their communities. That is the seeds of hope where we are. We went to the San Francisco Symphony together. Uh, they were playing Dvorak, which I was excited about. But the re thing that really excited me was that the great Danish conductor, Herbert Blomstedt, was conducting. Now, here's the thing about Herbert Blomstedt. He is 95 years old. <laughs> he had just flown in from conducting the New York Philharmonic. <laughs> and when he came out onto the stage, there was a smattering of applause because it was 15 minutes before the performance because it took him 10 minutes to get from the outer stage to be assisted over to the center to conduct where he sat down and conducted with one finger <laughs> and it was masterful brought the house down i read an interview with him later uh the next day where they said what is the secret to your vitality and you know what he said i love music <laughs> i love music what's the secret to the church's vitality I think it's clear if you listen to the scriptures, these hard scriptures we've heard today, whether you're talking about the kind of intense mess a family can get into, like Abraham and Sarah and Hagar, what a mess. But God's love could penetrate that mess and bring healing. Or Matthew's community, terrified for their lives, could hear the words of Jesus and know that they were loved. Or us, in the moment we're in in the Episcopal Church today, to hear in a fresh way, God is with us at the mess, and God loves you. That's the secret to our vitality. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able. Together, let us reaffirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate in the Virgin Mary and was made man. 
For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. seek you. We pray for the world and all who work for justice and peace. We pray for all creation and every living thing. We pray for the lost, the forgotten, in those in any kind of need. We pray for those who have died and all those who grieve. We pray for the special needs and concerns of this congregation. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Church of Bangladesh. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for all good works of the churches in our diocese. We pray in thanksgiving for our parish school, Vintana. We pray for those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, and those in any trouble. Jackie, Jean, Rick, Azure, Naya, Seraphine, Barbara, Jen Berry, Dick Quigley, Ian, Glenn Bowman, Nancy Wild, Sanjeev, Ray Stewart Dick, and Lauren Arnold, Mary E. and family, Severin Bylan, the Kochunov family, Charlie, the Reverend Vern Jones, Mark Wild, John Randall, Brooks, Greg, Cody and Sean Bissonette, Larry Afmuth, and Margaret Hutchinson. We pray for all whose lives continue to be disrupted by the pandemic, for the health and safety of girls and women across the country, and for the victims of gun violence. We pray for those who have entered eternal life and for those who mourn them, especially Henrietta C., Gloria Wing, and those we remember this week who are nearned in our columbarium, Myrtle T. Steinhelfer, Laura Baker Hall, and David W. Means. We give thanks for answered prayers. I invite your own prayers of intercession or thanksgiving, either spoken aloud or in the silence of your heart. Creator spirit and giver of life, pour out your spirit upon the whole creation. Come in rushing wind and flashing fire, in courage and inspiration to turn the sin and sorrow within us into faith, power, and delight. For your love's sake, amen. Let us confess our sins so that we may receive God's grace. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. 
We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, forgive you all your sins for our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Yeah. Peace. Peace be Peace with you. you, Carol and Charlie. Hi, Randy. 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 Hi, John. Nancy. Chris. All the John. Chris. Hi, Chris. Chris. Nice Hi. to see you, Chris. Hi, Hi everybody. Bob. Bob. Peace be with you. Peace. Peace. Okay. Peace be with you. Peace be with you all. Your dick Quigley. Oh, there's Dick. <clears throat> Peace, Dick. Chris, we'll see you in a few days. Well, once again, let's <clears throat> ask the Zoom people to mute themselves when they can. Um, and let me move this. Welcome, Scott. I th that was excellent. Given the text, that was excellent. <laughs> uh, it's hard to say much more than that. Um, announcements, you have a sheet of them in the back, I think, of your, each bulletin. A lot of things are on summer break, as you know, but that's okay. Um, Scott is going to be, let's see, there's one announcement about Scott, and I think Laura, uh, yeah, we, you want to come and give the announcement? Can we switch to the uh, lectern, please? So, um, yeah, on behalf of all of us, I just want to especially thank the Reverend Scott Sherman for being right here with us. We're just so appreciative of your sermon and being spending the entire morning here too and i want to let you know he's going to be at the coffee hour as well and i really invite everyone to um come to the coffee hour and take that opportunity to speak with him there so thanks yeah if you have some questions about that sermon this would be that would be a great time <laughs> i i should say um this it's a something of a little apocryphal story on the day uh as scott and i entered the church for the eight o'clock service there was a man standing, just sort of looking at the books over on the side over there. He's wearing a, a sweatshirt and running shoes. Probably just came in from just being around. And he said, can I ask you a question? Yeah. What's an Episcopalian? Two priests walk into a church on Sunday morning, and <laughs> they are asked, what's, what's that? So he got quite an earful, I think. Uh, we invited him to stay. Um, but uh, it, it reminded us all to be on our best behavior, I guess. You never know who's going to come to dinner. So, um, Let's see. Are there other announcements for the good of the church we have today? Otherwise, I'm going to commend to you just to make sure you look over the bullet, what's in the back of your bulletin. If not, then we have a blessing for a birthday. Corey, if you will, please. Okay, everybody follow along on page 10. Watch over your child, Corey, O oh Lord, as her days increase. Bless and guide her wherever she may be. Strengthen her when she stands. Comfort her when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise her up if she falls. And in her heart may your peace, which passes all understanding, abide with all the days of her life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Happy birthday. And now on to the institutional part. The prayer for the bishop transition. This we will say together also. 
Almighty God, giver of every good gift, by your grace you have called us into one fellowship of faith. Look graciously on the people of the Diocese of California during this time of transition. May we be guided in heart and mind by your Holy Spirit to seek and welcome a faithful pastor who will care for your people and equip us to perform the work of the church. Grant us in all our doubts and uncertainties the grace to ask what you would have us do. Save us from all false choices that in your light we may see light and on your path may not stumble. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. All things come of you, O Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, 
for you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him, you brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And, then, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son and his sacrifice, that we might be acceptable through him being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in harmony under your Christ <clears throat> and bring us to that heavenly country where, with all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and Amen. Amen. 
Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. gifts of God for the people of God, holy food for holy people. This is God's table and all are welcome here. We'll have the small cups all the way across and the common cup will be standing in the middle we'll, with him. Oh, circle over there.
Now that we've shared the meal, let us now share the post-communion prayer. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members in your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food and sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you to stand as you're able. May God bless you with discomfort at easy answers, half-truths, and superficial relationships so that you may learn to live deep within your heart. May God bless you with anger and injustice, oppression, and the exploitation of people so that you can work for justice, freedom, reconciliation, and peace. May God bless you with tears to shed for, for those who suffer from pain, rejection, re disease, starvation, and war so that you can reach out your hand to comfort them and to turn their pain into joy. May God bless you with just enough faith in yourself to know that you can make a difference in this world so that you can indeed do what others claim cannot be done. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and forevermore. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia.
Guð.